Hi everyone. Today's parent tip is about reading. Reading to your preschooler, helping your preschooler learn to read and hopefully have your preschooler and elementary age children enjoy it enough that they actually seek it out and want to do it. That's kind of a goal for all of us. We want our kids to enjoy it. There's so much of life that involves reading and it's just such a pleasurable activity that the more a child is engaged in it and enjoys it, the more chances there are that the child will be a lifelong reader and stick with it and be more successful in school as a result. So starting at the beginning with a young preschooler, a three-year-old, obviously a three-year-old isn't going to be reading um, sight words and um, beginning reading books and things like that. They're not able to yet. Some are. Some are taken to it right away. But for the most part, in general terms, a three-year-old is not going to sit down and read a book. And developmentally, that's appropriate. Where you want to begin with a three-year-old is simply with the alphabet. Start teaching them different letters, letting them see the uppercase and the lowercase to letters. Um, letting them start to recognize mainly the letters in their name is a great place to start. And then letters in family members' names, letters around the house and the environment. Uh, most kids, I think, recognize the M in McDonald's. It's just kind of an environmental sign that is there and it has an impact on us. We all see it. We all know what it means. So saying that as well, what that leads to is labeling stuff. You don't want to label your whole house. You don't want every object in your house to have a label, chair, chair, table, table, refrigerator. You know, you don't want to go around doing all that. But the more labeling you do, the more the connections will be for the child. They'll see this word and it's on a chair. They'll know it's a chair. So if they have a playroom or a space that's theirs, that would be a good place to start. You can label the different objects, the different furniture, things like that. Visuals also help. You can put the word chair with a picture of a chair next to it then there's really that connection being made for them. So visuals in general are very important for kids because they can't read words. Anytime you can add a visual with a word, it helps to make that connection. So as the child progresses, they're starting to recognize letters, upper and lower case. They're probably even starting to read their name. That's uh, first name, then you can move on to last name. If you wanna do the name of their street, you can start to use familiar things and help them recognize that. Once you're ready to move past that, once your child is four or five and you're ready for them to start picking up a few more things, the next place to go would be to letter sounds. You can start that with a three-year-old. Just don't expect them to remember all of them, but it doesn't hurt to start. It's a great place to begin um, with the letter sounds at the young age of three even, so they start to hear them, they start to get used to them. When you're reading with them, you can take a word or two and sound it out and just kind of let them hear how it's broken down into parts and how those parts make sounds. And also while you're reading with them, use your finger, go the left to right so they get that sense that that's what reading is. You start and you move across and you come back and you move across. You can do that in multiple places. If you have a calendar at home, you can show them that the days of the week, left to right, left to right, left to right, just to give them that foundation and that idea. So those are some of the foundations, as I said, and a place to start with the child with the letter recognition and the letter sounds and the basics of how you read from left to right. So now that they've got that down, a next place, a next step to take would be sight words. There are lots of sight words out there, but you want to start with the basics. And I'm going to include on Facebook a link to a game that I've made for you. It's a sight word bingo game. There are 30 different bingo cards that you can print off, two on a page, and then it also comes with a calling card like this, where you can either just mark off or you can cut these out and use them as the bingo things that you call. Basic sight words literally starts with A. That's a common word that we use. And, can, is, it. All these basic words that we use, and then they get bigger and more involved, but they're still common words. You can look up sight words on the internet. There are a couple of different lists. So as your child masters these early on ones, you can go look for more. And also the bingo game, I literally just Googled a uh, free bingo generator game and template comes up so easy to work with. You just type in whatever you want and you can get three, or excuse me, 30 free bingo cards. So if you are working on letter recognition, you can go out and make your own bingo game and just put in the letters of the alphabet and it will mix them up and generate different bingo cards. If you're working on number recognition, um, addition, anything you want to make bingo with, I recommend this. It was really easy to use. And again, first 30 cards are free and you really don't need more than 30. So sight words are the next place to go. Uh, we use them all the time. And when you get those early reading books for kids, a lot of those are basic sight words. 
Then after that, you can work on rhyming and word families. Rhyming is wonderful for kids. It doesn't even have to make sense. Look at Dr. Seuss. All of his words rhyme, well, excuse me, in his stories, everything rhymes, but a lot of them are nonsensical words, but it works. It just gets that rhythm going in the child's head and they start to recognize. And then as you're reading, you can have the child guess what the coming rhyming word is once they get the hang of it. If you say cat and the next sentence might end in bat, you try to lead them to that and get them to say it. So have your child be involved in the reading process with you in that way. Let them predict what's going to be said next. And rhyming words are a great way to do that. Another great predictor for what's going on on a page is the picture. If the child can look at the picture and kind of get the main idea of what's going on, then they can even make up their own words and read to you. And that's good too, because it's still that concept of what I'm seeing, this picture, there are words that represent it. And that's where you begin. It's just by maybe even making up your own words in your own story, but eventually getting to those sight words and letter sounds and being able to read the actual words on the page. So back to word families. Word families are like at, in, ill, all, anything that ends in two, three, four letters that you can put a letter in front of and make a word. So I have something else that I'll be putting on Facebook for you with word families. There is a page that has different word families. Like I said, there's at, in, and, in, and then a blank in front of it. Then on a separate page are letters to cut out. This one I would recommend if you have cardstock, copying this onto cardstock because you're gonna want this to be sturdy when you cut it out, preferably, so you can use it again and again and again. Also, if you have those um, clear sleeves that I like to use so much, you can stick this inside and the child can actually write the first letter, erase it, write the first letter, erase it. So what you can do with this is after you have printed out the letters, you can let them pick any letter and put it in front. And then using those letter sounds that they've learned, say they choose the letter C, you can help them sound it out. C says K. Well, we know that this word family is at. So you have K, at, cat. Then they can pick a different letter. They choose the B. B says B. So we have B, at, bat. And you start to put the words together. Now again, let them put a Z in front of there. They don't need to worry that that's not a real word. That's not the point right now. The point is to make the sound and use the word family. Recognize that that's at, anything you put in front of it, if you can make that sound, you've got a word. And then you can go through, it ends with a couple of three letters down there, so they'll have four letter words. And then you can also do this on your own. If there's other word families that you use a lot or you can think of, you can make your own sheet and have them put the letter in front and see what word they can come up with. Now, as your child does get older, I referenced a couple of times these early readers. They come in different levels. Level one is obviously a starting place. The Bob books are wonderful. They're short, they're good for their hands, they're just the right size, and they've got great words in there. If you can find those, they usually come in sets, so you can get a whole bunch of books. And then as it progresses, of course, the pages get a little bit longer, a little bit more words on there, and the story gets a little bit more involved, and the words get a little harder. But if they've got these foundations of sight words and letter sounds, they can sound out the words with maybe a little bit of help and be very successful. Again, as they progress, so now you're out of those, my biggest suggestion for that is to find an area of interest, especially if you have a child who is a reluctant reader. Find something, if they like baseball, see if you can find books, early readers or young readers about baseball, if they like cars, just follow that area of interest. They're more apt to be willing to sit down and be interested if it's something they're interested in already. And then as they get older, if you still are struggling to get them to read and they're getting to third, fourth, fifth grade and they should be reading longer and longer books, sometimes short stories work best for that age. When I was a young child, I would read 10, 15, 20 pages into a book and put it aside, start a new one. And I kept doing that. So a teacher recommended to my mom short stories and that was successful for me. So I pass that on to you as an option as well. I hope these tips are helpful. One other thing before we go, I am also a firm believer that especially at the preschool age, learning should be fun. It shouldn't be rigorous. It shouldn't be boring to them. We don't want to lose them as learners at the age of three or four or five. This is a time to grab them and 
get them excited about learning. And to do that, I think that learning should be done in ways that interest them. Through, again, if they're interested in cars, use those whenever you can. If they're interested in dinosaurs, there's so many things you could do with dinosaurs. Find your area of interest and then allow that to be the teacher. Bring the reading into that, bring the math into that, bring all the different things into that interest area and try to grab them. There's enough time later for them to be sitting and doing worksheets and listening to teachers lecture. This is time for them to be active learners and learning through play. It's valuable and you hook them then. You get them excited and learning and they'll want to continue. They won't burn out at a young age. So I hope those tips were helpful. I'll be back next week with more tips. But in the meantime, if you'd like, you can subscribe to the channel and look for some more parent tips and for some kid videos. Thank you for spending your time with me today.